Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignTechTips.com. Well today we've got another video in our Divi for Beginners series and you can find the link to that playlist down below this video. We're going to be looking at the fantastic Divi countdown timer today. We touched on it before in a video where I showed you how to build a coming soon page. It's a really great little feature as it's animated it gets people's eyeballs on it really quickly. And of course you can make it count down to anything you want. For this example, I've got a seven day site wide sale and I've actually added a little button that you can link to anywhere you want. I've just linked the section below with that today. Like I say, really easy to do and you can get some fantastic things going with it. So let's get started. I'm going to enable the visual builder. And yeah, what's enabled, let's roll down there's our little countdown timer. I'm going to delete this and we'll start from scratch. In fact, I'm going to delete this whole row. Okay, I've got a regular section here, the blue tab. I'm going to add a new row, a little green button to add a new row. For mine, I'm just going to use a single column today. And funnily enough, inside that column, we're going to put a countdown timer. And there we have it. It puts a little background in there, the background colors that whatever you've got set as your default theme accent color in the Divi customizer there. And if we go over here, we've got all kinds of options. First thing you're going to want to do is set the date that it wants to count down to. To do that, just roll down here, choose where you want to go to. I want to make mine about a week. I want to make mine about a week. So that'll work for me. And you can adjust the hour and the minute down here. So you can actually start it exactly when you want to. You may have noticed there's a little title up here. Let's say seven day sale on there, whatever it is you want to say for yours. Now down below, we can put a link in. And of course, if you've got a sale on or you've got a site launching or a page launching or a post coming, it'd be a good idea to link it to wherever that is. I'm just going to link it to this bottom section here. I think I gave that section a CSS ID of icon. So I can link to that by simply putting hashtag and the CSS ID name. That will link to this section down here. Now, if you're linking off-site to somebody else's site, you're going to want to open it in a new tab so your site stays open. If you're linking to your own site like I am today, we want to keep it in the same window. Best practice. Okay, background here. We did a whole video on backgrounds. You can get some incredible effects. I've been using the default blue right here for most of this site. Let's just make this slightly more interesting by blending it with an image. I'm going to go over to image. I'm going to add an image. Let's use that one right there. You can leave it like that if you want to, but I'm actually going to blend it with that default blue that I put in the background. You can do that by rolling down and you'll find blend mode right there. I'm going to use multiply. That works for me. You can read that really well. And it's got a bit of interest value in the background. Background image blend is absolutely awesome. You can get some fantastic effects. By playing with some of these you really can one of my favorites is luminosity so do check them out i'm going to leave it on multiply there great okay well we set the date we set the time we set the background over in the design of course you can modify any of this text and any of this text has a little paintbrush associated with it if you want to get to the design features of something quickly click on the little paintbrush that's connected to it for instance, here's the title. And Divi has a crazy amount of fonts. If you click on the, where it says default there, left click, you can scroll through into audition one, just roll over it. It'll give you an example of that font. I'm going to leave mine on the default today, but there really is a huge amount to choose from there. I'm going to make that semi bold, perhaps. And I'm going to capitalize it. Of course, you can line it left, right, center or justify there and change the text color here. I'm happy for it to be white. That stands out on background fine. And of course, any other of these, you can click on it. Take you to the numbers. 
And again, you've got all the same options. You can change fonts, weights, styles, alignment, however you wish. Again, I'm happy with the default there. Down below, we've got the label, which are the hours and things like that. Now, if you're shrinking this down on mobile, you may want to change the size of stuff like this on a mobile. And you can do any of that. For instance, we're on this little label text here. I roll down to where actually the text size. This is common to all Divi modules. If you roll over the dark writing, you'll see some little icons appear. If there's a little mobile phone icon, there is on most settings. You can set different values for tablet. If I click on it, it'll go to tablet mode. That's okay on tablet. Click on the phone mode. It actually works. We've got our S's falling down there, so we can make it a little smaller on mobile until that actually works. If I move this across a little bit, go make sure you're on the thing that you want to affect, label size. I'm going to take it down till it all fits on there. And you can still read that. It's all fitting on the line. I think I might take that timer text down a little bit, not too much. Click on that little paintbrush. We'll go down again, number text size, make sure we're on the mobile version. And we can take that down or up, as you can see, until it fits perfectly. Remember, we've got totally different amounts, pixels and values on each of those. You can put them. Great. Let's go back down to where we were. OK. Well, if we close that one up, we've got the text, the title text, number text. The actual text one is generic. It'll do everything for you. It's putting everything on the left, everything in the middle, everything on the right there. I'm happy for it to be in the middle. That's handy if you just want to float everything one way or the other or change from dark to light. You can put text shadow on everything if you want to. This is a kind of a dark background, so it probably won't help. But you can also sort of add glows of glow effects on dark backgrounds by putting a bit of shadow on, giving it a light type color, like a white, kind of makes it fuzzy looking there to me. If you put a purple on, perhaps you can see that little purple glow and you can adjust it. And do things like that. If you want to, you can click on the color, make it brighter, change it to anything you want there. I'm happy to have no box shadow on there or text shadow, I should say. Getting my Photoshop and my Divi terms mixed up there. <laughs> okay, we've done title text, number text, separated text. You can make those little colons smaller or bigger and change color if you want to. Sizing wise, we don't need to adjust that. Sizing, what it does, will actually change the size of that module. For instance, if I take the width down, it makes it smaller and you can make it bigger if you want to. And then you can align it where you want. I'm happy. For mine to be 100%. And with most things, Divi, if you do something that you don't like, simply select it, delete it. It'll go back to the default for you. Fantastic. Okay. Spacing, obviously, is margin and padding. Margin is going to push it down, left, or right, or even up if you use negative, from the outside. Padding is the distance of the outside to the inside content. So if I add 100 pixels on the top, it'll push that seven day sail down. And you can do the same on the bottom by simply hitting the chain. It'll give you an equal amount on the bottom. I'm happy with the default again, so I'm just going to delete that. Borders. We can change this to rounded. We can give it glowing borders, underlines and things like that. You can choose to put it on all sides. If I put a border on all sides. Again, I'll, I'll use a very loud color so you can see it. I'm going to select red and just put in the actual width that you want up there. And we've got a little red border there. And of course, as usual, if you don't like it, you can get rid of it just like that. I kind of skipped over this. We can make the corners rounded at the top here. We're still under the border, under the design tab. If you've got your little chain there checked, you can do all sides at once. For instance, if I give it 20 pixels, gives it little curved corners there. You give it 50 or a higher value, it'll be a much bigger. And if you uncheck this, you can do crazy things. 
and make some silly shapes. You might enjoy these shapes. But you can kind of make it any shape you want there. And again, I'm happy with the way it was. I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. Make sure the chain is checked. And we're back to how we were. Fantastic. If you wanted to, you can just put borders left, right, top and bottom. For instance, if I put one on the top there, remember we're just adding the red. Let's just add. And you've got one on the top. But again, I'm happy to have no more to that at all. Box shadow. That's just going to lift it off the page slightly. And give it a 3D kind of value. Just, just sort of lifts it off the page. Gives it that sort of 3D look. And you can change the position easy. Horizontal, obviously. That's going to move it left to right. Vertical. It's going to move it up and down. Strength is going to make it deeper. And the spread is going to disperse it. Again, I don't think I need any box shadow on here, but I do like using that every now and again. We're not going to use filters and we're not going to use transform. We're pretty happy with this at the moment. Now, one thing I'd like to do, we've got our sort of general setup here. We've got a timer going down. The actual module is going to link to somewhere. We've got it linking to this section here. But I'd also like to have a call to action button because some people are not going to know to tap to take them to wherever we want to take them. So if you want to add a new button and keep that same background, I'll show you exactly how to do that. I'm going to go into this module. I'm going to take the background away. You'll always find background under content. Just trash that. Going to go to the image. I'm going to trash that. You may think it's disappeared. It's still there. It's just white on white, so you can't see it at the moment. What I'm going to do, I'm going to save that. I'm going to go into the row itself. Green tab for a row, blue tab for a section. And I'm going to give it the background. Under content, again, always find background. Put that blue back in there. There it is. Let's merge it with that image. I'm going to go to background image and background image. And we'll put that same one in there. And I'm going to blend it using the multiply option. Great. And that looks pretty much exactly the same as we had it just now. But if I save this, we can now add any module you like underneath. And we'll still have that same background because we've done it on the row this time. So let's hit the dark button to add a new module. I'm just going to put a little call to action button in. Let's flip it into the middle. I'm going to go over to design, alignment. I'm going to pop it in the middle. Now you can style any button. At, that mo at the moment, that button styled how I've got it set up in my customizer. You can style it any way you want by going into the button there under design. Flip the little switch from no to yes. And you can do anything you want there. I'm going to leave it just like it is because it works for me. Great. Now to me that button's a little far away. So I could pull it out with a bit of negative margin or I could go into our little timer module above and just take some padding off the bottom. So let's do that. I'm going to go into the timer module, a little dark mod, dark tab for the module. Down to design and spacing. You'll always find padding and margin under spacing in design. And on the bottom, let's take any padding away by putting a zero in there. See what happens. Yeah, that's tightened it up nicely. But I've also taken it away from the top there. I really didn't want to do that. So let's uncheck the chain and delete the top entry there. So the top's now how it was. And the button's close enough there. But I think I need to add a bit of space below that button. So I think I'll do that in the row itself. Green tab for the row, remember. We know where to find spacing over in design. Spacing. There's the pattern. Let's pull up maybe 20 pixels. No, nope, too short. Let's put 50 pixels on there. There we go. That kind of works for me. But of course, you can go on and add whatever you want. You could put a row with two columns underneath and use a section as a background, however you wish. Let's check this is going to work on the front end. I'm going to save my changes. I'm going to hit the little purple button down here. Save draft or publish if you're ready. And let's exit the visual builder. 
if we roll on down. There's our little countdown timer. Remember we put a link in the actual countdown module itself. So anywhere I click on this countdown module here, it'll take us to the section just below. I didn't put the link in the button, but you can put a link in the button to take you anywhere you want. And just click on it like that. Obviously, I'd probably take them to my seven day sale page or whatever. But there's a brief overview of the Divi Countdown Timer. That's a really handy little module. And because it's animated, it does get people's attention very quickly. It's also a great thing to use for a coming soon page and things like that. We've got a video out there in our beginners playlist for a coming soon page. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. Don't forget, if you have any questions, pop them below the video. I'll do my best to answer them for you or make a little demo video like this one. I hope you've enjoyed this today. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell and subscribe to our YouTube channel. There's plenty more coming. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.